A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. The reign of God can be likened to ten bridesmaids who took their torches and went out to welcome the groom. Five of them were foolish, while five of them were wise. The foolish ones, in taking their torches, brought no oil along, but the wise ones took flasks of oil as well as their torches. The groom delayed his coming, so they all began to nod, then to fall asleep. At midnight, someone shouted, the groom is here, come out and greet him. At the outcry, all the virgins woke up and got their torches ready. The foolish ones said to the wise, give us some of your oil. Our torches are going out. But the sensible one, the wise ones replied, no, there may not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy yourselves some. While they were off to buy it, the groom arrived, and the ones who were ready went into the wedding with him. Then the door was barred. Later, the other bridesmaids came back. Master, master, they cried, open the door for us. But he answered, I tell you, I do not know you. The moral is, keep your eyes open, for you know not the day or the hour. This is the truth. Peace be with you. I wanted to speak briefly about the parable of the five wise and the five foolish virgins. These are the bridesmaids entering into the wedding feast. So, in Jewish tradition, a couple would be engaged, and then the groom would return to his father's house to prepare a place for his bride. But he was not in charge of when he could return. He would return when his father was satisfied with what he had built. Then his father would say to him, it is ready. And the groom, regardless of the time, would go to meet his bride. And then there would be feasting and celebrations. There would be wine and food, as we see in the wedding feast of Cana. So these bridesmaids, these virgins, they did not know when the groom would come because the groom himself did not know when he would be returning. So these bridesmaids, what would they do? They would have torches in case he came at night, and if they were smart, they would have oil as well. Now, in a spiritual sense, we would interpret this oil as faith, as acts of charity, as love. We would interpret this oil as a, a proof these people were Christian of their belief and of their fruits. And so when they came in the middle of the night, they could not give to others something that that one did not have. So I want you to think about your mother or your grandmother or your aunt. I want you to think about this person in your family who you consider the most religious or the most spiritual, the one who is the most loving and the most prayerful. Think about this person. Think about how much oil they may have saved up for themselves. No matter how much oil they have saved, they cannot give that oil to you. So if you say, I will be fine because my mother is a prayer warrior. I will be fine because my grandmother was a saint. Because my aunt or my father, my grandfather, or my wife 
or my husband, or my child, I will be fine because somebody else prays for me. But, but what we see in this parable is that we ourselves must have the oil. We ourselves must have the faith, must practice love. In this way, we can be ready whenever Jesus comes, whether it is at the end of days or whether it is at our last day, the day of our death that we must always be ready for when he comes, that we cannot rely on the works of somebody else, we cannot rely on the faith of someone else. Rather, we must have a relationship in with God. We must have faith with God. We must love him. We must choose him. We must follow him.